Hello and welcome once again to Home Bible Study. From my home to your home, this is Robert Haller thanking you for taking the time to observe this video. It is so greatly appreciated. And also always to those that subscribe, view, comment, and respond. Today's topic, Satan's Lies, How They Work and How They Win. Now, you might be asking yourself, isn't this a home Bible study? Isn't this something that we're supposed to be teaching from the Bible? And predominantly about Jesus Christ? Well, yes and no. You see, if you're looking for a home Bible study today that's going to teach on the greatness and the lovingness and all the feel-good stuff that is out there in modern Christianity today that is being preached about Jesus Christ, you have the wrong video. This video... It's going to be a home Bible study based on the truth of the Word of God. And it's going to show you today how Satan's lies work and how they win. Because it's just important to know who Satan is as it is to know who Jesus Christ is. Because too many times modern Christianity and the world today would rather hear about other things. They would rather hear about lies than the truth. And that's a very apparent in this world today and amongst the majority of people in this world, bar none, whether you want to admit you're part of that uh, category or not. You will find much more emphasis on the things of this world going on, being reported and being uh, talked about in the forefront than you would about anything pertaining to Jesus Christ, our great God and Savior and the creator of all things. And that's normal for the natural world, ladies and gentlemen. That's why this video is being made, because people tend to want to look and think about the here and now and the flesh of things rather than the spirituality of things of Jesus Christ and the world to come. You see, it's easier to listen and be exposed to a lie and believe a lie than it is to be exposed to the truth and believe the truth. And this all ties in with Satan's lies and why this video is being presented. It's very apparent in the world today, as we touched on many times in these previous videos, and which I will bring in today also, the uh, events of the world and the events in our own country that are based and created on a lie. And what the dangers of that is, because People will not get the gist of it. They will not see the forest for the trees, if you will. They cannot see beyond the great lie as to what it's really, really doing. And it's funny when you watch, especially in our country, uh, you have these governmental institutions fighting one another, these different categories of people that put themselves into. I'm neither a Democrat nor a Republican. I am not a liberal. I am not a... Uh, conservative, I'm not a leftist, I'm not a rightist, I'm not a liberal, I'm not a progressionist, I am not a Marxist, I'm not a socialist, I'm not a communist, or any of those ideologies of mankind of the flesh that have been brought into this world that are being discussed relatively openly now, including racism uh, and all this other junk, as I call it, because it's all of the flesh. I am a realist, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I am. And you only can be a realist if you can look at everything from other than the flesh's respect, perspective of mankind. If you can look at it from outside of the realm of the natural man of the flesh, you will see the reality of things from a different perspective, from God's perspective, not mankind's. That makes you a realist. You can look up the word realist in the dictionary. I'm sure you'll find some man-made definition of what it and who a realist is. It doesn't come close to a realist that believes and looks at the world from the perspective of God's truth in his word. But that's what we're looking at it from today. Because you have in this societies today, all this fighting going on, all these uh, revolutions, if you will, or contemplating revolutions. People are taking sides. People are starting to rebel against this and rebel against that. And there's many movements out there that are influencing the flesh to do things they normally wouldn't do. And it's even going to come to the fact where it is now starting to have people harm one another. And that's going to get worse. There's people going to be killing a lot more people because of what is being promoted by either side. Okay, it doesn't matter. 
there's going to be the radicals out there that are going to believe this lie. And why do I call it a total lie? It's because of Satan's lies, how they work, and how they win. You know, the scripture that I'm going to show you, first of all, in Proverbs chapter 20, 16, verse 25, which I've used many, many times, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end of uh, are the ways of death. Now, another one I want to bring to your attention is in the book of Philippians. Excuse me, the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, this happens to a lot of people. But in verse 14 of chapter 4, this is what it says. It says that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the sight of men, and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. And then I want you to take your Bibles and open them up to 2 Timothy, ladies and gentlemen, chapter 3, verse 13. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 13 says this. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. That is key, ladies and gentlemen. Small verse, but so powerful when you look at what's going on in the world today. I remember one time a while back, I had quite a conversation. It was a letter writing correspondence with a pastor from another town that was a pastor of the First Baptist Church in that town. And when I first saw what he was doing and what he was writing in the paper, I sent him a letter and I quoted this verse and he got all upset because he said, how dare you equate me with the evil that worse wax and wax, that worse, wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. And it showed him through scripture why that was. Nevertheless, he is the one that ended our conversation. He is the one that ended our male correspondent relationship. He didn't want anything more to do with the truth of the word of God, see. You can take that for what it's worth, but that's the same thing with mankind today. When you have these people, and, and you listen, and I listen a lot more than you think than I talk, because I do these videos, you think that's all I do is talk about it. Well, that's not true at all. This is only 30 to 40 minutes of a talk, once or twice, sometimes three times a week, but the rest of the time is looking and listening from God's perspective on things. And when you look at the lies of how they work and how they win, from Satan. It's all about deceivableness. You see, it all has to do with the fall of mankind to understand this. It all has to do with the natural man and the fallen, fallen nature of mankind, which begins at the beginning of your Bible in chapter 3 of Genesis, verse 5. You can't escape it no matter what you talk on, no matter what you give on in the Word of God, when it comes to the evil and even the good that's found in the natural man, it has to stem back to the fall of the natural man when they obtain the knowledge of good and evil in them, which was based on a lie. It already deceived from Adam and the woman in the garden. It was deceivingness. It was deceivableness that caused them the rest of mankind's fallen nature. And with that being said, that isn't everybody today. But that isn't being taught. See, that isn't being exposed. That isn't being presented because... How dare you say that one side's fighting the other side and, and both sides have good and evil in them? And the sad thing about it is the deceivables of the lie of how it works. These people that are, say, let's say the, the right wing or the Republicans are fighting the Democrats. And the Republicans are fighting tooth and nail, if you will, on the conservative side, but everything that the Democratic and liberal side wants to bring into the... Uh, realm of the country, how to rule and reign over the people. And there's this great divide, this great argument. And both sides believe they're right. Both sides believe in what they're doing. And when you have that, where do you have common ground? Well, you're not going to have common ground. And mankind uses this word compromise, which never has worked, even in past history. You can look up the history of mankind. Compromise is a word not found in the Word of God, by the way. There's no compromising with the Word of God. That's a man-made uh, word. That is something Satan has put in to mankind with the knowledge of good and evil, because mankind believes they're their own gods. But it's funny when they do that, because they don't believe that they can individually do anything by themselves, or they can start a movement, they can get people to follow them, they can create a movement, but it's going to take millions and millions of people to change things. And, and it's out there how things are done on a local level, or how things are done so subtly over time, 
The other side's not going to recognize it. And that's what's happened in our society today. That's what's happening in this country today. When you look at what's going on, why all these changes coming, and change again, I wrote in Facebook just earlier today that change is a good thing when it is done to advance something that already exists in a positive change for the better. This new change is coming in, seems like it's a change that they want to destroy everything that has been in the past. And that causes a big fight between one side versus the other. But again, the one side that's wanting to change is the Democratic side versus the Republican side. I don't want to make this into a mu too much of a political issue, but it's something we can use to show you the lies of Satan and how they work and how they win. Because the people promoting this agenda, the Democratic Party, are under this lie. They don't realize it. The destruction that they're bringing in, they believe, is the right thing to do. And you have the Republican side doing the same thing. They don't understand that the lie that they're under, they're fighting for what they think is a good, that they perceive the other side to be evil. They want the good back. They don't understand the lie that they're under. They're both being deceived. Human beings are easily deceived, ladies and gentlemen, because if both sides, if all people are given a lie, one way or the other, there's never going to be any truth to it. And the hidden agendas will never be brought out until the lie is complete. Even the people promoting the lies don't realize this. They don't know the ramifications under the surface of the lie. Satan is very clever with this, and he'll use government systems, he'll use people, he will use the world to promote this so that he wins. Because then it'll be way too late for anybody to change anything. There's no such thing as change. There's going to come a time when there's going to be the battle of good and evil. But the good is going to be of Jesus Christ and evil is going to be of Satan. Not of mankind. See, that's the great lie. Also, mankind doesn't realize. But Satan has them under what? The deceivableness of his lie so that he can win and keep them from the big picture. He can keep them away from the truth. And it doesn't only happen in the governmental systems, ladies and gentlemen, of societies. It happens in the religious systems of society also. Religion is the great lie of Satan. Religion works the same way. You have in the governmental systems, in the political realm, you have leaders. You have people of influential positions that are deemed leaders and are, expe are expected to lead the people. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, you have the same thing in religious sectors. No difference. You have the leaders of these religious systems in Christianity, Judaism, Islam. All of these have leaders. And they promote their religions. And they want to promote what they think is right. And they think they're all an authoritarian of this because they have certain things that they use. The Christians on Fortunately, Christianity will use the Bible, but they use it totally in the wrong way. Islam will use their only Bible, what they think is the word of their Allah, totally in the wrong way. Judaism, the same way, because ladies and gentlemen, they're under this great lie. They are being led by mankind down the ages and taught this doctrine and shown this doctrine from showing these words of wherever they get them from, that this is the way it should be. Christianity makes the big mistake of mixing law and grace. That puts them right out of the picture. I don't care what part of Christianity there is. They all teach law and grace. Islam teaches a whole different false religion. Then you have Judaism that denies, for the most part, the existence of Jesus Christ. A lot of sects do. They believe strictly in the old six books of the Torah of the Old Testament denying that Jesus Christ was even here. And some don't deny it, but they deny that he was the Messiah. He was just a man, a false god, if you will, a blasphemer. And they even deny the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Anyway, with all that being said, that's how the great lie of Satan works. It produces a pseudo-truth on the surface. It gets everybody to believe something. And it's... They continue to feed this. Now, religions have been doing this for millenniums. This new movement in the political realm of today has been going on for at least 60 to 80 years. They've been very subtle, just like the religions have been so subtle because the people have been drawn in 
by what has been handed down by mankind and their traditions. And you have to be careful with that because religion is a tradition. Christianity is a tradition. Governmental systems are traditions of men. Jesus Christ changed all that at the cross. See, the great division of the cross changed all that. But mankind doesn't teach that. Mankind won't accept that. Why? Because of the great lie of Satan. Satan has them totally convinced that they're gods, especially the natural man and those that belong to a religion, whether it's Christianity, Judaism, whatever Islam, whatever product there is or whatever title they have or whatever you affiliate yourself with is based on the foundations of the flesh because they are founded by the flesh. Judaism as a religion was founded by the flesh. Did you know that? God never called it a Jewish religion. Paul referred to it as a Jewish religion. Jesus Christ went to the cross to get rid of the things of the flesh. He got rid of Jews' religion at the cross, but that's not taught, see? Judaism is, they think, still full-blown in this age of grace that we live in today, see? It hasn't changed. So they rely on the Old Testament as to what their leaders are telling them. It's the same way with Christianity, which was manifested after the cross. There was no Christianity before the cross, ladies and gentlemen. No. And it wasn't even in the Bible. It came up by mankind, somewhere in the second, third century, somewhere in that time frame. Islam came in around the sixth or seventh century based on the foundations of mankind's doctrine. And you can see what's happened with it since. It is the great lie of Satan, and it has won everyone per much, pretty much everyone, very few people are going to know the truth of the Word of God. Very few people are going to be able to see the reality of the truth of the Word of God against the falseness of the lies of these people. You see, these people have been deceiving people for generations and generations and millenniums, and if you've been deceiving people for that long, what happens to those that are deceiving? They become deceived. That's not me telling you. That's the Word of God telling you that. I don't have that kind of wisdom, ladies and gentlemen. Only Jesus Christ does. But through his eyes, through his spirituality, through his spirit that dwells within me, I can see, I can read, and I can believe, and I can actually see the reality of the world the way a lot of people cannot. And it's not, I'm not patting myself on the back. I just look at everything from God's perspective first. Because if you don't do that, you'll be taken right into that lie. Because it says in Scripture that uh, Satan has the ability to take people captive at his will because they do not want to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ, because it is hidden to them, because Satan blinds the minds of those that believe not. Lest the God of this world blinds the minds of those that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. That's 2 Corinthians chapter three, verses, excuse me, chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. And you find the other uh, one about captive being captive uh, by Satan at his will is in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 26. And it's all recorded, and it's all for us and to us in the revelation of the mystery. That's the only place we find these kind of things, ladies and gentlemen. You don't find it if you use the word of God in truth, and you ready to divide the word of God in truth as he commands us to do, you will see it. If you don't, if you rely on mankind, and you rely on the flesh to teach you through your religion, through your Christianity, through your Islam, through whatever it is, you, your Judaism, you, you will miss this. This is not going to be exposed to you because it's only found in one part of the whole Bible, which is 31,102 verses. It's found in the 2,033 verses that Paul wrote from Romans through Philemon, the doctrine for the body of Christ church in the dispensation of the grace of God that we live in today called the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ. The revelation, ladies and gentlemen, the revealing of the secret that was kept hidden since the foundation of the world, but it was revealed after the cross. So it's available to us today. Yet what is happening? Satan's totally aware that it's available to everybody today. Don't kid yourself, but he's using mankind for them to lie in wait to deceive. Because he has mankind, the ones that lay in wait to deceive are already deceived themselves because they believe the lie. Because they have the lie in them to start with. I had the lie in me to start with, ladies and gentlemen. 
as proof of my life prior to finding the Lord Jesus Christ and accepting the gospel of Jesus Christ. When he shines his light into my heart that only he can do because my mind was blinded because I was lost to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And because I could not believe because I was a natural man. I believed everything in the natural man. I went to and fro in different places like you wouldn't believe, which people do. You give them time. This movement will fade. There will be another movement coming in, and they'll find things constantly to battle, to fight for, and do whatever. How many people out there today are writing books about this? They're making fortunes on it, and they're using it to their advantage because it's of the flesh. Ten years from now, good Lord tarries and waits that long, there'll be something else down the pike. You can bet on it. Because of the instability of mankind's truth. Mankind's seeking. Because he has a knowledge of good and evil. He is unstable. He is like the wind and the waves of the sea. Tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine that comes along. By those that wait to deceive. That's what happens to mankind. That's what's happening in this world today. That's why Satan's lies work. And that's how they work. And that's how Satan wins. It's keeping people in a lie that they do not even know they're in, thinking they believe the truth, which is not what they're seeking, even though they think they are. That's how he wins. And what does he win? Does it give Satan some kind of glory that he is going to have for eternity? Absolutely not, ladies and gentlemen. Satan knows where he's going to be in the end, in the big picture. He's going to be in the lake of fire for eternity with all of his fallen angels. And all those that he carried with him, that take, took captive at his own will, with him. That's the only thing Satan has going. Because that's what Satan did the very first chance he got with Adam and the woman in the garden. He knew... He was cast out of heaven because he wanted to be like God. He knew he couldn't be a God, but he could be like God. But you see, the difference between Satan and Jesus Christ is this. Jesus Christ died on the cross so every one of us could have a chance for salvation, to be living with Jesus Christ as we were created for in the first place, in the likeness of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. In Genesis chapter uh, 2, verse 26. Satan's just the opposite. Satan takes you and destroys you. So you'll never have a chance ever to be with Jesus Christ. With your spirit being made alive in Christ Jesus through the gospel of Jesus Christ. As long as he keeps you hid from that gospel. As long as your minds are blinded by the God of this world. And those that believe not. And you're taken captive by him at his own will. You will end up in the same place that he is. Because he has told a lie back in Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, that you'll be his gods. And you see the mankind that has the knowledge of good and evil will never forget that. They probably don't even sometimes realize it or think about it, but that's the realm of it. What is the gods of this world that Satan has put in people? Ego. Self-worth, pride, you're an individual. You don't like to be violated. You want to have everything because you think you deserve everything. You work hard for it. You think you deserve it. What is that? Selfishness, covetousness, all of those things that cause the fall of mankind is because of that lie that you're a god. If you're a god, you should not have these kind of things. You should have everything you desire, everything that you want at your disposal. And you should have it when you want it, where you want it, and how you want it. Anybody interferes with that, it's not right on an individual basis. You have property. Somebody comes in on your property. You don't want them on your property. Get off my property. No trespassing. This is my property. That's just a tiny, tiny example. There's millions of them out there, ladies and as people live through their lives. And if you start looking at your life and you look at the things that happen in your life on a day-to-day -day basis, you will find how many times, why do people upset you? Why do you get upset at other people? 
It's because of that. It's because of those three things, the, the uh, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Thinking you're your own God. Believing in the lies, being deceived your whole entire mortal life. And you're listening, and it's no different if you decide to become part of the movements that are in you within your society, wherever you live, whatever country you are, whatever origin you are, whatever nationality. I don't care about none of that. But I'm just telling you that. You can associate that with being gods. Look at the United States. Oh, they want leaders. They put people in leadership position. But the minute the leaders don't do what it is they want them to, they rebel. Or the leaders become big-headed and they want to become dictators. They want to become controllists. They want to be a totalitarian type government. And that's what's happening in our country today. You have the natural man leading the natural man. Controlling the natural man. Thinking they have dominion over the natural man, as we've discussed in many times before, part of the great lie that mankind can't see because it's a lie of Satan. And that's how it works. People accept, people think, well, yes, that's the way it should be. It's always been that way. And we even know those, those of us that are religious that leaders are ordained of God. And they think that means it was given okay by God. That's not what it means at all. We did a study on that. It's not what it means at all, ladies and gentlemen. But yet mankind can't get over that. Mankind cannot see that. They, they understand only the things of the flesh that are here and now. And that is also part of the great lie that works for Satan and wins for Satan is you go for the here and now. You go for what is most important to you in the flesh. First of all, yourself, then your spouse, and then your children, and then your family. Although a lot of people will try to say, oh, no, my kids come first. First come to shove. I bet you change your tone very quickly. There might be a few exceptions, but that's all. When it comes right down to it, it's an individual thing, see. And when it's an individual thing, it's of the flesh. But then the lie tells you, well, you can't do anything by yourself. You can have ideas. You can have uh, theories. You can have projects. But... You're not going to get them off the ground by yourself. You're going to need help. You're going to need to get a bunch of people behind you. The masses, the masses of people, that makes a difference. That's where things get done. Isn't that amazing? When one person in the name of Jesus Christ came onto this world and changed everything by himself. No armies, no billions of people following him. All by himself, because when he was at the cross, everyone abandoned him. And yet he did not stop. That's the power of Jesus Christ. That's the truth of Jesus Christ. The truth is out there, ladies and gentlemen. But again, to do a video on truth gets hardly any views, gets any comments. Do people even care about the truth anymore? They're more interested in what the world perceives as a relatively of the truth of mankind, the relativity of the truth of mankind. That's what they're interested in because it is a conditional thing or a situational thing. It is as unstable as the waves of the sea are, depending on which way the wind blows. That's what they're interested in. And that gets their attention. That's what they fight for. That's what they live for. And you watch these people. And it's so sad because my heart goes out to them because they will fight tooth and nail. They thinking this is the greatest thing that they live for. They dedicate their lives to. And in the end, ladies and gentlemen, they all die. And you know what? They're both, both sides are going to end up in hell and the lake of fire. And they're going to go, what? How can that be? I was fighting for what was the good. The other side says, well, I was fighting for the things that were good. Isn't that the great lie? Isn't that how it works? They aren't going to find this out, ladies and gentlemen, until they die. They're going to be in hell, waiting on the lake of fire after the great white throne judgment, scratching their heads, if you will, in bewilderment, because they're both in the same place. Well, they can't be. Well, that shouldn't be. You don't think people that are in hell and lake of fire will shake the fist at God? They're going to be forced down on their knees, ladies and gentlemen professing that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And they will confess with their tongues. 
You don't think they'll be in defiance? You read about people in the book of Revelation when God, when Jesus Christ is handing out the wrath of God on these people, they're shaking their fists at him in defiance. That's the power of Satan's lies. And that's how he wins. Just like he's winning today, ladies and gentlemen. He's winning today like you wouldn't believe. Yet nobody wants to do anything about it. Who wants to stand up and say, all this is based on satanic activity. All of this fleshy things of the world has to do with the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, and Satan's battle of good versus evil. They tend to say it's good versus evil in the fleshy sense, but it doesn't work that way because both sides have the... If both sides have the knowledge of good and evil in them and they're fighting the battle of good and evil, you can't win because they both contain the very same thing. If one side was only good and the other side was only evil, you would have a true battle and a true war with a winner, which you're going to have with Jesus Christ the good against Satan the evil. That's the battle. That's the war. But see, Satan has mankind so flustered, mankind so blinded, so deceived, mankind believes in his lies that he's telling others as he thinks is the truth. Yet both sides, ladies and gentlemen, contain good and evil. It's never going to work out. It can't even neutralize itself, ladies and gentlemen. That's the product of a great lie of Satan, and that's how it works. And that's how he wins. And he has won many, many, many battles. And he will continue to win a lot of battles. And he will continue to cause a lot of people to lose not only their physical lives, but their spiritual, a chance at a spiritual life. They'll have to experience a spiritual death that they have never experienced before. That is going to be more terrifying than anything the flesh can come up with. And the flesh can come up with some pretty terrific horrific types of death to suffer, can't they? You can't even come close to the spirituality death that you will experience when it happens to you. You can live your life in the flesh. We all are living our lives in the flesh. But don't live your lives to the flesh, ladies and gentlemen. Because the flesh will consume you. And they'll do it gradually. You won't even know it's happening until it's too late because that's how Satan's lies work and that's how Satan's lies win. Once it's over, it's over and there's no going back. You aren't going to get a second chance to do anything. And that's when the realization hits and it'll be a shock, not to your life, but to your death. Now, you can avoid all this, ladies and gentlemen. You can have the spirituality of Jesus Christ within you. You can be a realist. You can see this for what it really is. You can see the big picture, which is the truth of the Word of God, which is eternal life. Nothing is hid. Everything is exposed on the surface because there's no hidden agendas in the truth. Or you can believe in the here and now, the temporary, the lie of Satan, of the flesh, which brings nothing more and nothing less, but not only a physical death, but a spiritual death. That choice is yours. You can believe this video or you don't have to believe this video. I'm not pushing it on you. I'm just telling you there's a way that you can be saved. There's a way you can have the reality in your life that you'll never be tossed to and fro by any wind of doctrine that comes along or any uh, ideologies, theologies, doctrines of men that come along that keep you unstable as the winds of this and the sea and the uh, waves of the sea tossed to and fro by those that lie in wait to deceive. You'll be able to see those that are deceiving. And you will find deceivers all over the place in all parts of the fleshly life, ladies and gentlemen, even although they appear to be righteous. How are you going to know? You won't know if you're in the natural man. You won't know if you're not saved. The only way you're going to know is if you're saved. Because your spiritual lives will be open. You'll be able to receive the free gifts of the Spirit that God gives you freely. The natural man cannot. It's foolishness unto him. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 13, uh, 12, 13, and 14. Please read them. You want to be saved? All you have to do is believe. That's how easy it is. Believe what? The gospel of Jesus Christ found in the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ in the doctrine for the body of Christ's church, which is found in Romans 2 Philemon in the dispensation of the grace of God that we live in today. That was the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ that he gave personally to Paul to give to you and me. 
That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I have preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory that which is preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3, 4, I delivered first of all unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And verse 4, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now you believe that by faith and faith alone. No works. I get such a kick out of these people. I get one response from some guy that constantly tells me that law and grace go together. The poor man does not understand scripture. I told him he knows Jesus Christ. It's just that he doesn't believe Jesus Christ because what do you do with verses 8 and 9 in first uh, in, in the book of Ephesians chapter 2? What does it say? It is by grace through faith that you are saved. It's a gift of God, not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. Works is of the law. Grace is of grace. Grace is by faith. You don't have to work for anything when it comes to your salvation. You just believe. And you'll see for the first time, some of you in your life, the deceivableness of Satan, the lies of Satan, not only how they work, but also how they win. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate your listening. Home Bible study from my home to your home. This is Robert Hall. I'm thanking you. And always remember, until next time.